Hey guys, um, I'm going to get back on here to give you guys another update. Um, hopefully you saw my last video, which kind of explained why I've been like MIA here um, on my channel. And that was because um, my mom, who has been battling cancer for the past two years, um, she was put on hospice and was given, you know, um, a very short time to live. Um, since that video, um, when I filmed that video, we thought that she might have a few weeks, um, maybe like a month or so. Um, after I filmed that video, she went downhill like super fast, much quicker than we were anticipating. Um, and my mom did end up passing away on July 31st, 2023. Um, so it's been just a little over a week since that happened and it has been um a whirlwind uh we had family start coming in and you know we were busy doing preparations um and so it was just busy busy exhausting emotional roller coaster um and like i said just a whirlwind um, and today, the last of the family has finally gone home. My two brothers, they both live very far out of state, um, and their families, they went home. And so now it is just us and my dad left here. And now I feel like this is when reality is going to really settle in. Um, there have been so many times already just over this last week that like something has happened and my mom is always the first person that I call or tell anytime anything has happened. And there's already been so many moments when like I've wanted to do that. And I haven't been able to. Um, and so that's just been really hard and difficult and weird. And um, it's going to take me a really long time to get used to the fact that she is not here anymore. And I can't just call her um multiple times a day like I'm used to um so this whole thing has been just very hard um losing my mom at such a young age like never would have expected that which I kind of talked about in my other video um and it's just like I said it's been such an emotional roller coaster like I will have moments where I'm okay um and I'm you know obviously all the time I'm glad that she's not suffering anymore um and I know where she is and I know that I will see her again someday without a doubt. Um, and I'm really glad that I have that hope and that reassurance because I don't know how people make it through something like this without having that hope and reassurance. I really don't um, because I, I don't think I would be doing as okay as I am right now. <laughs> I know I wouldn't be um, without having that hope and reassurance. So I have moments that I'm doing all right and then like the next moment I'll think of something or reality will hit me in the face like a, like literally like a brick wall and then I'm like crying or I don't know grief is weird I've never had like I've lost two of my grandparents um and that's hard but this is this is so much harder than that just because of how close I was to my mom um this is just, this is, this is just hard. I mean, I feel like I'm repeating myself, but I don't really know what else to say. It's hard. And I don't think that, I don't think that you can truly know like how hard this is until you're in this situation where you lose a loved one that is just super close to you. It's just, there's no way that you can describe it. It's just something that you have to experience and something that I wish um, nobody had to experience because it's so hard. But like I said, um, I know where my mom is. I know that I'm going to get to see her again. And I am glad that her suffering is over because she suffered so much over the last several years with her health. Um, and, you know, my mom, she had a lot of health issues. And she had to spend a lot of time in hospitals over the last several years. And she hated the hospital like hated I don't mean I don't think anybody loves the hospital but she really hated the hospital and so um you know she really wanted to be able to um 
spend her last moments on earth at home in her, the comfort of her own home. And I'm just really glad that that was able to happen with the help of hospice. And honestly, with the help of my grandma, which is my mom's mom and my aunt, which is my mom's sister, they flew up, they live in South Carolina, so they live far away from us. And they had flown up just to spend some time with my mom because, you know, we all knew that her time was coming to an end, but we thought that we had weeks, maybe even months left with her. And so they were just planning on coming up for the weekend just to spend some time with her and then maybe coming back the next weekend, you know. Um, none of us knew that when they got here, my mom would start declining so fast and, um, you know, she passed away while they were here. We did not know that, but God knew that. And I think that that was part of God's plan because he knew that me and my dad emotionally, physically, mentally, we needed my grandma and my aunt to be there, not only for the support, but my aunt is a nurse. So she knows everything medical. So she was a huge help, um, you know, towards the end there that me and my dad would have probably really struggled if it was just the two of us. Um, so, you know, that was just all in God's timing that my aunt and my grandma happened to be here. Um, and, you know, I also think that that was good for my mom, um, just to have the comfort of her sister and her mom. And, you know, when my mom ended up passing away, um, she was at home and, you know, towards the end, she did get to a point where, um, she was kind of not responsive. Um, and that's how we knew that it was getting closer. And the moment that it actually happened, I say that this is like, I call it heartbreakingly beautiful um, because it was heartbreaking because my mom died and I witnessed it and I've never witnessed a person die before. Um, but it was beautiful because she was peaceful. My mom was not in any pain. She was peaceful. Um, it was beautiful because my dad was holding her hand and my grandma was there. Um, you know, just talking to my mom and comforting her in the way that I'm only a mom can. And my aunt was there. I was there. We were all just surrounding my mom and she just kind of drifted off to sleep. Um, and right before she passed away, she kind of got tears in her eye. Her eyes were closed, but she kind of got tears in her eyes. And my dad said that he, you know, would like to think that she had gotten her first glimpse of the beauty of heaven and it brought tears to her eyes right before she entered heaven's gates. And I don't know, it's really a beautiful thing to think about what she saw as she took her last breath on earth and um, entered into those golden gates of heaven. So, um, after my mom passed away, um, you know, we had to call all family, notify family. We had to notify hospice. We had to notify the funeral home. There's just so much to do over those next few days, um, leading up to, so my mom passed away on Monday and the funeral, the visitation hours were Friday night. The funeral was Saturday. Um, everything went really really well um her service was absolutely beautiful it's funny because my mom has always been a planner my mom likes to plan um she would always make huge lists before events or vacations or anything like that and she actually wrote out like her last wishes and her funeral plans and we were actually able to like um, a week or so before she passed away when she was still able to we were able to have like a little family meeting and talk about that which was one of the most emotional conversations I've ever had in my life um, but it was also one of the most beautiful <laughs> conversations of my life um, one thing about this whole journey and something that does bring like comfort to me is that the process of dying for a Christian, it can be beautiful. It's heartbreaking because nobody wants their loved one to die. We all want more time with our loved ones, but it's beautiful because she wasn't afraid of death. She knew where she was going and she knew, she knew that it was going to be 
a perfect place and that she was going to be in the presence of her savior. And so she wasn't scared and we were sad, but we weren't scared. And so this whole process, yes, it's been hard. Yes, it's been heartbreaking, but it's also been like so beautiful. And I'm not sure if that makes sense to you. If you don't know the Lord, then you probably think I'm crazy <laughs> and you probably, it's not making any sense. But those of you that do know the Lord, and especially if you've lost a loved one who was also a believer, then maybe you know what I'm talking about. Um, it's just different. It's just different when you know where your loved one is going and they know that also. Um, so anyways, my mom, she pretty much planned, back to what I was saying about she was a planner. She pretty much planned <clears throat> her entire funeral. So the service was beautiful and people kept telling me and my dad and stuff, you know, how beautiful it was. And I would tell them, well, she pretty much planned it. She planned the songs. She planned um, who spoke. She planned um, where it would be, all of that stuff. She said that she wanted happy flowers. She's never really been a girl that likes roses. She loved like almost like the wild flower, more natural flowers. And I'll insert a picture here so you can see the, the flowers that we ended up going with um, to go on her casket. And they we literally told the florist she wanted happy flowers. And they were happy flowers and they were beautiful. Um, and so the whole service, it just, it was really a beautiful service. Um, and so... Um, We've just been spending time with family while they were here. You know, it's rare. Like I saw some of my cousins um, and other family members that I just, I don't get to see them very often because of distance. And so that was nice, even under the circumstances to be able to spend that time together. And like I said, today, um, finally the rest of the family has left. And so I think it's gonna be, reality is going to be hard. It's going to be hard to get used to a new normal. Um, and that will take time, but grief is a journey and that doesn't mean that it's going to get easier necessarily, but maybe over time we will just get more um, acclimated to the new normal. Um, that's just something that we will have to take day by day and that's kind of where I'm at right now. Um, another thing that I wanted to tell you guys about, this is really cool. So my mom, you know, she had cancer she spent a lot of time in the um, cancer unit at the hospital getting her chemotherapy. And um, she said that when she was there, they would have people donate snacks and they would come around with like a little snack cart and they would let all the patients pick, you know, one or two snacks or whatever. And it was just a little thing. But when you're doing something like chemotherapy where you... um where it's so hard, you know, you're going through one of the hardest things in life to have cancer and to go through these treatments and just knowing that they could pick a, a fun little snack. Um, I don't know. It was just something special for my mom and she loved that. And so one of her last wishes was that people bring like donations of snacks to the funeral and then for me and my dad and the kids to go take them to the hospital at a later date um and donate those to the cancer unit like in her honor and so i did that i put out a thing in the obituary and we told everybody to bring snacks to the funeral and then you know we have a lot of friends and family that don't live here that we knew would not be able to come to the funeral but would still want to donate something like that so i actually made an amazon wish list of snacks and you guys we got so many donations from that. Amazon literally probably hates me because they, I don't know if you've ever seen these before, but they have these huge like shipping crates. They left six of those at my house filled with snacks. We probably have over, oh gosh, we have hundreds. I'm bad at estimating, so it's kind of hard to estimate, but we have probably three to four hundred boxes of snacks and so then most of those boxes have you know dozens of them the prepackaged individual snacks inside of that so we have so many snacks which is just totally amazing my mom would be so happy about this um it was just awesome to see everybody 
bringing those snacks and writing little notes of encouragement and you know in her in her memory so we're gonna have to take those up to the hospital um maybe next week or so um there's one other thing that i wanted to fill you guys in on um my parents and me and my husband were supposed to go on a cruise next week um, and originally when my mom was still sick, I was like, I'm not going on that cruise because the last thing I want to do is be in the middle of the ocean when my mom passes away. I it was very important to me to be there the moment that she, um, passed away. So originally I was like, oh, I'm not going on the cruise. Well, then my mom passed away much sooner than we thought. Um, and actually when she was sick, she had told me and my husband that we still needed to take my dad and we needed to make him go on the cruise and that she would get my grandma to come stay with her and she would be fine but she wanted all of us to go well all of us were like we're not going without you um and then she ended up passing away and so then this was a really hard decision because i really debated it like first of all do i even want to go on a cruise right now second of all um what are people gonna think and i know that i shouldn't care what people think but that's, that's a hard, it's harder, it's easier to say than it is to do. Like, there's just a part of all of us, I think, that does care what people say and think of us. And I'm like, are people going to think that I'm like a terrible person for going on a cruise literally two weeks after my mom died? Um, but then at the same time, I am physically, mentally, and emotionally exhausted like like never before in my life this has just it's been a lot um and there is no time in my life that I need rest and relaxation and literally to just sit than right now in my life and that's kind of what this cruise is all about and so my dad basically kind of said the same thing and he wants to go on the cruise and I'm like well if my dad's going then I'm going and we're going to do this together. So my husband and me and my dad are still going to go on this cruise. And I don't know. I think that that's what we need right now. Everybody, like all of our friends and family that we've told about it, they're all telling us that we need to go on the cruise. So if other people think that we're bad people for that, I can't control what other people think. All I know is that my mom wanted us to go and we need this. Um, and this was supposed to be like an adults only thing. So we already had my sister-in-law flying up to stay with the kids, which that never happens that we, you know, get four, five days without our kids. Like that's probably never gonna happen again. Um, so we just, we need to take, we need to take this trip um, and do this. And my, my mom wanted us to, I mean, she literally told us. So that's gonna happen next week. Um, and I think that after that happens, I think then I will be getting back into my groove um, as far as YouTube goes with like my regular content. So thank you guys for hanging in there with me. Thank you for all of the super encouraging messages. You guys have been so kind and so sweet and just really blessed my heart with all of your messages um on instagram and your comments that you leave here on youtube um it's like i said i just i feel like i just keep saying this this is hard um but my strength comes from the lord and god is gonna get me through it i also have a really great support system um of friends and family in real life and here in this community um and so i just I really appreciate it and um, like I said it's gonna take some time kind of getting used to our new normal but um, my mom was not the type of person that would want us to sit around and be depressed yes we're gonna have sad moments yes we're gonna have sad days but she would not want us to sit around and be depressed she would want us to live our lives to the fullest make every day count make memories spend time together as a family do fun things um that's what she would want so that's what we're going to try to do and um that's pretty much the update that i wanted to give you guys just because i know that so many of you had reached out to me and were um very involved in this whole thing that's been going on in my life right now so i love you guys 
thank you guys and I'll be back soon with my regular <laughs> everyday life uh, mom life content but um that's pretty much it I love you guys <laughs> and I'll see you soon okay bye